Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And what we're going to talk about in this series, this is probably going to be a four or five part series. I'm thinking it's going to be all about how to interview as a cloud engineer, cloud developer, DevOps engineer, SRE, pretty much anything like in that space. And this is going to be primarily around what I've been seeing lately from friends that I've interviewed at places like Microsoft and HashiCorp, and from my own personal experiences lately interviewing for consulting roles. Now, the one thing that has changed a lot over the past few years is the simple fact that, you know, as a cloud engineer, for example, or as an SRE, you maybe didn't have to do coding tests before, but now it's very, very different. So if you're going for, you know, cloud engineer, cloud native engineer, something along those lines, chances are you're going to have some sort of coding test. And again, Microsoft is doing this. HashiCorp is doing this. Other agencies hiring con contractors and consultants are doing this. It's a big thing. You're really expected to code at this point as an infrastructure engineer, sysadmin, anybody. So if you're trying to move into this space, what I want to do is I want to show you a real life coding exam that I've seen recently, and we're going to go through the whole thing together from start to finish. So let's head over to the Word document and take a look at the requirements. So here's the problem statement. What we need to do is build an application in the programming language of your choice, so Python, Go, PowerShell, whatever you want, and expose that as a REST endpoint that returns the following JSON payload with the current timestamp and a static message. So, for example, what this means is, you know, you're going to have to create some sort of web API and that web API is going to expose this JSON. So anytime that you hit the URL, for example, let's say like you spin it up locally on localhost over port 8080, whenever you go to localhost colon 8080, when this application is running, that means this is going to be the desired output. Let's move on here. The application must be deployed on a Kubernetes cluster running in a public cloud provider of your choice. What this means is it can't be like a raw Kubernetes cluster that you're running or mini cube running on your local development machine, anything like that. It has to be a Kubernetes as a service cluster running in Azure. So Azure Kubernetes services, it could be EKS or Elastic Kubernetes services in AWS, or it could be GKE or Google Kubernetes engine in GCP. So let's go ahead and go down a little bit more. The provisioning of the cluster, as well as the deployment of the application must be done through code. So what this means is when you're creating that Kubernetes cluster, it's gotta be done in code and the deployment has to be done in code. So you're probably gonna be spinning up some sort of YAML CI CD pipeline to be able to deploy all of the code that you're writing here. So let's scroll down and take a look at what we're gonna have to do. The first is we have to output the above JSON in any programming language and write a test to ensure the app works. Next, we have to build a Docker image with the application that's exposing the JSON. So you're gonna have to build the Docker image, you're gonna have to test the image, and then you're gonna have to get it up to the Docker registry. And the reason why is because Kubernetes is gonna have to be able to pull that Docker image from somewhere, so it can't just be sitting on local host. You're gonna have to actually put it up into Azure Container Registry or Docker Hub, anything like that. Next, you're going to build a Kubernetes cluster in a public cloud. So you're going to write the configuration code to build the Kubernetes cluster. You're going to write a deployment and service Kubernetes manifest to deploy the app. And then finally, you're going to build a CI CD pipeline with YAML to deploy the infrastructure and the application. So let's jump into the first part here. And the first part is going to be outputting the above JSON in a programming language of our choice. With that, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so I have an app directory here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in main.go. And I've decided to use Go for this. Again, the directions say you can use anything that you want, so feel free to play around and, and use any programming language you want. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna just gonna define our package here, package main. And then we're going to use our imports. So the imports, again, you have to output some JSON. So you're going to have to use some type of JSON package here. So we're going to use encoding JSON. And then to be able to print stuff out and see some logs, we're going to use the FMT package. We're going to use a log package specifically just for logs. And then because this is going to be a web app, we're going to use net HTTP. So those are our imports here that we're going to be using for our application. 
Next, because we want to be able to specify that JSON output, we're going to create our very own type struct for this. So we're going to type type uh, interview struct. And then in here, we're going to have message. And the message that's coming out is going to be a string. And then we're also going to have timestamp. And that's going to be a string as well. Next, we're going to set up our function here. And that's going to be our main function. And inside of our main function, from a functional programming perspective, we want to be able to call a sub function. So we're going to name this request. Okay. Now let's set up the request function. So func request. And then what this is going to be doing is you need to be able to have that response of the HTTP and the writer for the HTTP. So, so to be able to input and be able to output. So we're going to do response HTTP and then we're going to use the response writer and then we're going to do R and R will contain a value pointer to request. Okay. And now we'll set up our function here. So now let's actually, you know, define what this type is going to look like and all the values and stuff like that. So we can say interview type that's going to equal a slice here and that'll be the actual type that we set up. So interview and then from here we will add in our values. So let's do interview and then we'll do message equals uh, YouTube interview. Then we'll do timestamp and it is 1 15 2020 at the time of my recording this today. Okay, so we have this set up, we'll put our comma here. So this is going to be to initialize our type as a slice. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use the JSON package and then we're going to do new encoder. So it's going to encode that JSON for us. We're going to give the, the response. So that's going to be, uh, let's see here. Okay. That's going to be the writer. So we'll type in response and then dot encode and oops, sorry. I'm going to put that after that dot encode. And that encode is going to be interview type. Okay. Now we'll do FMT print LN and we'll say endpoint. So if you want to like hit this from the console to be able to test this, for example, then you can do interview type. Okay. So that's that. Oh, I'm sorry. This is actually not going to be our request function. This is just going to be a function that's actually doing all of the work. And then our response function, our request function will be the one that's, you know, doing all of the requests for the web API and stuff like that. So we'll do like, I don't know, YouTube interview. It's fine. And then oop, we got a error here, illegal runtime. Let's take a look at that. What is, uh, oh, does it want double quotes maybe? There we go. Okay. So then we have this here. Oop, you gotta put a comma. That was another error. And then constant to string. Uh, oops, that should be an int actually, not a string. Okay, and then let's do our request function. So our request function is gonna do the HTTP handling for us. And that's going to be just a slash. So what this means is when you hit the URL, so like let's say we spin this up on localhost to test it. When you hit it, that's going to be like the home page. Um, but if you wanted to do something else like, you know, output, then you would do like localhost colon 8080 slash output and that would bring it to you. But we'll just do it as like the home page right now. Um, and then the function that we're going to be using to call upon is our YouTube interview function and then we'll just do a log fatal down here just in case anything happens and we'll put our listen and serve 
we're gonna be doing over that over port 8080 and let's do a nil value here all right awesome uh, let's see what's happening could not import FMT um, oh it's fine it's just VS code all right perfect so now I'm just actually gonna close out of VS Code really quick and reopen it. I've seen this a few times uh, where you just kind of gotta. Oh no, now it's saving. But yeah, you might have to like close out of VS Code and reopen it. Nope, never mind. There you go. So you saw that message here how it was like loading uh, Go or or it was uh, saving the main file. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So this is fine. So now let's actually run our application to see if it works. So we'll CD. We'll go to app. We'll type go run main dot go. Okay, so our application is running. Let's head over to a web browser really quick to test it. Okay, so I'm at the web browser here. We'll type in localhost 8080 and boom, there it is. So our JSON output shows the message is YouTube interview and the timestamp there. So with that, that's how we can actually show the message and show the timestamp from a JSON perspective. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at how we can dockerize this, turn it into an image, and ultimately then be able to deploy it via Kubernetes. And the Kubernetes portion will be in the third video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again on the episode two of Interview Prep Series. Thank you so much.